<laughs> so the clap we're having we're about, we're about to have a clap off. Marijuana, you like marijuana, we like marijuana too. I'm a Denver tippy and I want to get hot on marijuana. Gonna go across the street and ask a volunteer that box under his bed. It's full of marijuana. Hey, Mr. Obama, when you and Michelle are bopping in the night, you're high on that marijuana. in this 4th of July we've been here for 44 years and they still haven't legalized marijuana. Anyway, 4th of July this year, same place, same time. We will be here all day long. Three more minutes. Boy, things move so slow. It's like Mr. Obama, Mr. Obama, uh, marijuana. <laughs> Mr. Obama. For real, I mean, you could do it, Mr. Obama, with one white of the ten. Uh, yes, you may, Miss Morgan. Hi, I'm Beth Morgan. Um, I help run two Facebook pages, Maryland Cannabis Coalition and 420 and the 410. Join either of them. But if you want to know about more cannabis medicine, go to cancer.gov. It's the National Cancer Institute's website. It's run by the National Institute of Health. If you look up cannabinoids and cannabis, they actually have a section with studies, preclinical and clinical studies, with marijuana and how it's helped cure cancer, or, or at least treat it in rats and other laboratory animals. They need studies for humans. We need to tell the government, get, get studies. We need studies. Write them, whatever. Anyway, is it almost 420? Uh, it's about. Marijuana. 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 As we count down here, marijuana. 419. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Tick tock. Goes to slot. Tick tock. Goes to slot. Government. I'm Wayward Bill, Chairman of the United States Marijuana Party. Thank you for making this party happen today.
Who wouldn't support the sick? You're you're an asshole if you don't support sick people. So that's how we feel about it. And we're going to be back in D.C. next year on 420 again. If the laws haven't changed by then, we'll be here again. So tell your loved ones, friends, let's get some more people in here. It started in D.C. It ends in D.C. Yeah. We're going to get James. We've got a patient here from California that wants to say a few things to you. Yeah. Um, he came up out of nowhere, and after James is done, if he doesn't take very long, if there's somebody else that might like to say something, come let me know. And then we're going to put the band back on while we finish up the day and say our goodbyes and everybody head home to, to really celebrate for So we're going to get words do from the we love cancer patient James. And we're here. And uh, right. after that, I'll go down. Oh, Barry White! Please. <laughs> How's everybody doing today? Hopefully everybody's doing good. I'm James. I live in California. Where things are legal, but still, things are happening to make it not legal. Just the other day in L.A., there were three clubs that were shut down. Yes, it still happens. But on a positive note, there is a doctor in Mendocino County that cured a baby's brain tumor completely gone with Rick Simpson oil made with high CBD. God bless. Yes. So that is a positive thing, and it has been reported and recorded, and it's all over the news. It's online. You can look it up. Just type in cannabis, Google cannabis baby tumor. What's the doctor's name? I forget his name. It's Dr. Yeah, it's Dr. Courtney. Yeah, it's, Dr. Courtney. it's Dr. Courtney. Yes. And then the first beginnings for testing with cannabis and cancer begin in San Francisco starting this month. There are two guys who, uh, one of them's a friend of my friends, and they are actually doing clinical testings on tumors, like injecting Yay, that's biopsy tumors with cannabis, with cannabis, with THC, and with CBD, and they also discovered that it takes, pretty much you have to have twice as much CBD in the plant as THC in order for the plant to be medicinal, so all of these plants that, and strains that have been bred for the THC, I mean, yeah, it's really good, it, you know, it, it has its medicinal properties, but as for like, cancer and all that, it's not really all that medicinal. It, it's good for headaches, it's good for getting you, you know, energized and all that, high THC strains. But the higher, you know, the CBD, the better it is going to be for you. I mean, growing up, I was a highly abused child, I had several head traumas. And thank you to CBD, my brain is feeling a lot better than it has over the years. It's like having issues with memory or having issues with thought or, you know, clarity, etc. You, you know, you got to try and find a way to get through. And so, high CBD cannabis has really helped me in my life. And I've, I've lived in California as a patient. I've worked in dispensaries. I've helped several patients. I mean, I have patients that I help, you know, and like this gentleman here, you know, like you produce medicine for people. That's the way it goes. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions for me about how things are in California? Last time I went, I went to Oakland, uh, Vegas, and I was going around there in Berkeley and all that, kind of went out Route 1, and I just found that like, Literally everywhere I went, everyone's just like so nice. They just like hand you, like, hey, you want this? Is it still like that? I mean, it's yeah, it is. It's still like that. It's still happy, you know. You live, you live out there, and people are very giving, and you know, everybody takes care of each other. It's all based on like community and just living life and being happy. It's the pursuit of happiness. I got a question. You can do that here. It's just a uh, you know, evil scare tactics that they try and prove produce and push on us to try and push us down emotionally and mentally and then therefore it all transfers physically because everything you think in your life actually crystallizes within your body and that becomes a belief in your in yourself so change your beliefs and change your ways and you know fight for what you truly believe in and it'll bring you 
much happiness in life. Yeah, I got a question. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. so, uh, how, how do we get how do we get the growers in, uh, in the Emerald Triangle to stop yeah, fighting organizations? Yeah, we're not fighting legal. To stop fighting organizations, they're fighting it right now. Uh, the whole thing with, for the, the the stance that the growers have in California is they are afraid of corporate America coming in and taking over for say Philip Morris for say uh, many pharmaceutical companies etc they really 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 want the laws to be set up so that way the all the growing rights stay in the hands of the patients I mean that is the reason why the, the law that passed in California a couple years ago it's because people were really afraid like because there were actually pharmaceutical companies and cigarette companies, etc., waiting to pounce and open well, up that's gonna warehouses happen, that's gonna happen, and stuff. But the thing is, how about Napa Valley with wine? You know, yeah. there are big wineries, but there are also small mom and pop shops too. Yeah, there's. So that's what they gotta embrace. They really have no choice. It's gonna happen. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna happen, but it can be set up in a way that it won't be so evasive on the whole economy. Yeah, it's gotta be set up right. Because it is. It's a big economy. Like cannabis produces so much money for the state of California it's not even funny because um, right now all the clubs you know as, as a person that goes to dispensaries and takes care of patients like you pay taxes when you go and you 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 grow your the medicine you take the medicine into the into the dispensary and you make your donation you pay a tax on that donation and you also you pay city and you pay state sales tax when you go and you buy your medicine in in the uh, dispensaries there's all been a whole debate on on the whole taxation for the patients seeing it's medicine that there shouldn't be a sales tax on it but unfortunately that's just been enacted and honestly that's the one of the only ways that states and cities and counties will allow the medical Canvas because they need to make money uh, off it. They're not going to let her taxation and the amount of money that they well, get I mean, it doesn't make it. sense. It's just if there's no other way, then that's the way it's got to be. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. We, I think there's another speaker coming up here. Yeah, and again, I'm James. Uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Alright everybody, I'm going to let the next guy just walk up and introduce himself. Has a thing or two to say today. Hi everyone. My name is uh, Johnny Appleweed and I like to smoke pot and I like it a lot. And I'm here to say that we need to continue with giving out, sending out the message about legalization that this is something that more and more people are embracing but not that many people still realize that this is a tidal wave that's basically taking over the country right now. And the more this is going to be shown as a positive example for the rest of the nation, the more the rest of the nation is going to pick it up and make it a policy in their own communities, in their own municipalities. So we need to really get out there and spread the word and let people know that this is not something to be feared but embraced. Change is coming and it's inevitable. We see it. It's in the, it's in the books. It's in the history books because history repeats itself. What happened with alcohol prohibition at the end of it is going to happen today or sometime within the next few years, but the thing is we have to do it right and we have to embrace it instead of fearing it. So that's pretty much what I got to say. And that's that. I'm going to sign off now. I'll see you all later. Take care, folks. You've been watching The Color Report. I'm Michael Pelagotti and I'm signing out.